Hey, St. John family, welcome to another week's Children's Worship Service lesson. I hope you had a great week. I hope you were kind and helpful, and I hope you learned a lot. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us this time to study your word. We pray that this lesson teaches us something about being true to our word. So we ask that right now that you remove any distractions, prepare us as we learn this lesson. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I'm so glad we're talking about honor this month because I have so many people I want to honor. I mean, there's so many people in my personal hall of fame. I mean, think about the the classrooms. Someone has to come in and clean those and organize them. And what about at registration down in Joyland? Someone had to make sure that that space was prepared for us. How about the guys who greet us in the parking lot? I mean, there are so many people who deserve honor. And what is honor? Remember, honor is letting someone know you see how valuable they really are. So before we get into the lesson, I want you to remember that everyone is important. Everyone is a VIP, a very important person. This is a show where you can choose what you think happens next in the story. And I tell you if you're wrong. Or if you're right. Are you ready to play? Good. So today's story comes to us from the Bible, obviously. And it's from the book of 2 Samuel, to be exact. And we're talking about David. And if you remember last week, David is known as a man after God's own heart. And he was one of the greatest rulers Israel would ever have. Um, but he wasn't quite king yet. Why don't we warm up with uh, a practice question? And if you were here last week, uh, you might know the answer. So let's see if you can guess. What comes next? So King Saul was jealous of David because the people liked him best. But Saul's son Jonathan and David remained what? Until the day Saul and Jonathan died in battle. Um, was it A, Bitter enemies, B, best friends, or C, rivals for the throne. All right, put those thinking caps on. Raise your hand if you think it's A. All right, who thinks it's B? And those who think it's C? The answer is B. Good job. Before David became king, he and Jonathan were best friends. They were such good friends that David promised Jonathan that he would always be kind to Jonathan's family. That's where our story picks up today. Are you ready to play? Me too. King Saul and Jonathan had died in battle against the Philistines, you know, which was very sad. But now Saul was no longer in charge. Did that mean that David could finally become king of God's people? What do you think happened? Say it with me. What comes next? Which one do you think is correct? Is it A, the Philistines took over so David couldn't become king? B, David immediately became king of God's people? Or C, he had to wait even longer? Raise your hand if you think it's A. All right, who thinks it's C? <laughs> How about B? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the correct answer is C. David still had to wait years before he could become king of Israel. Yes, years through many difficult battles and challenges. But in all that time, David never forgot his promise to his friend Jonathan. David remembered the promise he had made to be kind to Jonathan's family. When David eventually became king, he could have easily ignored the promise that he'd made so long ago. But he didn't. He called for his officials and asked if there was anything left from Saul and Jonathan's family. And no one knew. So they sent for a man named Zeba. Not, not Zebra. Z say Zeba. All right, good. But that's not even the hard name. Zeba was, was a man that, who served Saul's family. And he said that the son of Jonathan was still alive. That man's name was Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Say that one three times fast. <laughs> Way to go. So David sent a message to Mephibosheth to come see him in, at the palace. 
Now, one thing we know about Mephibosheth was that both of his feet were hurt, so he couldn't walk. And he was probably terrified to see King David. After all, I mean, his grandpa, King Saul, did try to kill David like multiple times, right? And, and what if David had only summoned him so that he could get his revenge? So what do you think Mephibosheth did when he heard that King David wanted to see him? So let's go to... What comes next? Did Mephibosheth... A. Ignore David and hide. B. Go see David and bow down to show him respect. Or C. Refuse to go to the palace. So raise your hand if you think the answer is A. Okay. Who thinks it's B? All right. And how about C? Okay. The answer is B. Mephibosheth was brought to before King David and he bowed low. He chose to honor David. But what would David do with him? Now that he was king, David could finally take revenge on Saul's family for all the time Saul tried to kill him. Then again, David did promise Jonathan that he'd always be kind to his family. So what did David do? Did he, A, he told Mephibosheth that he would be kind to him because of Jonathan. B, he told Mephibosheth he was angry because of Saul. Or C, he sent Mephibosheth away to another country. So what do y'all think? What well, was David? Was King David really that mean? I mean, really mean? Raise your hand if you think it's A. And B. How about C? Well, let me tell you, or no, let me read to you what David said to Mephibosheth. So at 2 Samuel chapter 9, at verse 7, it reads like this. Don't be afraid, David told him. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll give back to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and I'll always provide what you need. So the answer is A. David decided to honor the promise he'd made to his best friend, Jonathan. King David instructed Ziba to give Mephibosheth everything that had belonged to Saul and to take care of him. He told Ziba and all his family to form the land and provide for Mephibosheth, which was great for Mephibosheth, for Mephibosheth <laughs> because Ziba had a big family and David treated Mephibosheth like one of his very own sons. Mephibosheth was, of course, shocked and happy that King David would treat him so kindly. Mephibosheth and his son Mika uh, came to live in Jerusalem. King David provided for his every need. David didn't have to fulfill the promise that he made to Jonathan. No one was there telling him that he had to keep his word. But David did it because he loved Jonathan. He knew it was important to keep the promise that he'd made to his friend. You know what? That's a great way to honor others, by keeping your promises. It's like our bottom line for this week. And it is, remember, honor others by keeping your promises. See, when you honor your promises... Sometimes when you don't want to, you can show others how valuable they really are. That, that's what honor is all about. It's a choice you make every day. So what about you? Will you choose to honor others by keeping your promises? What comes next? What comes next? <laughs> well, that's up to you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and always wanting the best for us. Thank you for keeping your promises, just like David did for Jonathan's son. Please help us to do the same thing. Help us to choose to honor and show respect to others, even when we don't have to. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. David was best friends with Jonathan before he became king, and he made a promise that he would always be kind to Jonathan and his family. And David didn't forget it. Even years later, after Jonathan died, David was kind to Mephibosheth. He honored Jonathan by keeping his promise. Promises are really important, aren't they? It doesn't feel good when someone breaks a promise to you. 
It doesn't feel good when you break a promise to someone else either. But when someone keeps a promise to you, you feel like you really matter. You can show others they matter by keeping your promises. Say this with me. It's our bottom line. Honor others by keeping your promises. God kept a huge promise when Jesus came to earth to be our Savior. That shows us how much we matter to him. I mean, promises are really important to keep. That's why God never breaks one. I mean, you have a choice to either keep your promises or to break them and to not follow through with what you say. But remember, you should treat others the way you want to be treated. Do what you say you're going to do. It helps people to trust you more. You know, if you promise to do your homework before you play games or, you know, do something that you something else that you want to do and you do that, then you know what? Everyone who's trusting you trusts you just that much more. So that means that that mom and dad and grandma and, and whomever might actually trust you with more things on your own. And think about the flip side of that as well. If you promise to be nicer to your little sister, but you break that promise, not only will you have to face the consequences from your parents, but also your sister won't feel like she's important to you. So when we leave today, or as we leave this lesson today, I want you to remember this. Keep your promises because it shows that other people matter to you. It's a great way to show honor. So thank you for joining me this week. I pray that you've learned something about keeping your promises. So until I see you next time, may God bless you. And may you be given opportunities to show that you are trustworthy and that you can keep promises. Until I see you again, may God bless you. Bye.